So now you have a patient who has some neuro insult previously, maybe a neuro trauma or an elective neuro procedure, maybe a pituitary surgery, right? Any any simple surgeries can be a cause, right? So such kind of patients now coming to you with altered sensorium and fever. So how are you going to suspect? Ask the family, is the patient developed new headache, nausea, lethargy, change in the GCS or change in the mental state? Okay, this is from the history. Look for erythema tenderness over the subcutaneous shunt tubing. That is a, the, if the shunt is from here, you need to start looking, is there any redness or any signs of any infection locally? Okay, and the patient has fever. In the absence of any other clear source of infection, you need to suspect it is the neurosurgical meningitis. You need to also look for the distal site of the tubes of the shunts as well. For example, it's going to be a ventricular peritoneal, ventricular atrial, ventricular prural shunts. You need to do some investigation, some imaging, maybe just an ultrasound to look for any pockets of fluid. For example, this patient has a ventricular peritoneal shunt, ventricular peritoneal shunt. You do an ultrasound, look for any pockets and collections of fluid just below the shunt. That itself could guide you that the patient is infected in that particular shunt. The shunt needs to be removed. Okay. New fever and drainage from the surgical site in patients with intrathecal infusion pumps. All these scenes can tell you that the patient can have neurosurgical meningitis. So now coming to the big picture, how do I confirm? Of course, you are going to do a CSF analysis. When there is already an EVD drain, you are going to take sample from the EVD drain. It is going to be easy for you to take. right? So what all tests you will send? Cell count? Yes. Cell counts may be increased, may be normal. Glucose, yes. Proteins, yes, you are going to send that. You are going to send for cultures as well. What next you can send is, you can send for CSF lactate, CSF procalcitonin and nucleic acid amplification test, which is very specific like PCR for any particular virus and your BDG, BD glucan and uh, galactomannan and CSF, which is basically for the fungal, okay, to check for any fungal meningitis picture. These are markers. These are markers of infection basically. These are markers of infection. I am telling you today, even if your cell count, glucose, proteins are completely normal and the cultures have turned to be negative, but if your CSF lactate is high, the basin value we can say up to 4, if it is high beyond 4, itself can be taken as a sign of meningitis. Okay? This can also be used as a marker of improvement. You start treating the patient, you redo the analysis after maybe around 4-5 or five days and check out for the improvement in lactate. Fine. That itself will guide you whether you are going in a proper normal direction. This is how we use procalcitonin in the serum, right? The same way you can use the CSF lactate and CSF procalcitonin as well. So, of course, this patient was a, with this kind of history, maybe a neurotrauma or a neuro procedure, now comes to you with a suspicion of neurosurgical meningitis. And this is what you need to check, right? In the previous slide, we informed you what all to check. And of course, you are going to do a CSF analysis. In CSF analysis, this is what you are going to send. So, we have mentioned in the previous slide. So now, of course, you are going to go for a neuroimaging. We suggest go for a neuroimaging and then do the CSF analysis, right? So what exactly you are going to do? You are going to do the MR, magnetic resonance imaging with gadolinium enhancement and the DWI imaging, okay? You need to identify or image the distal site or also. If it is in the atrium, do an echo. If there is a pleura, maybe a chest a CT or an ultrasound of the, C, of the lung or an abdomen ultrasound to check for the distal site of that particular stent. <laughs>